Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We're so delighted to have such a nice audience here tonight. My name is Sue Cass. I'm one of the members of the committee that prepared this program. The other members are Karen Landers, our chair, Herb and Paula Gross. All right, the members of the committee, can you hear me now? No, it's not. The microphone. There's no PA. Right. This is just the TV. This is just We're filming. Okay. We gotta move closer. Can you all hear me now? I mean, I can shout. Louder. <laughs> all right. I'm a member of the committee that prepared this program. My name is Sue Cass. The other members are Karen Landers, our chair, Herb and Paula Gross, and Colin Cass. We appreciate the fact that you all took the time out of your busy schedules to come tonight, and we hope we have a program that you'll really enjoy. Thanks to the speakers who are sitting here in front of you, who are all current members of our town government, and they're prepared to teach you everything you need to know about town government. <clears throat> Thanks to the per Franklin Performing Arts Company and to Alan Mercer for the use of this wonderful facility. And thanks to Franklin Cable TV for recording our program. Um, exits here and at the back of the room, should you need them. Restrooms are out in the lobby and to the left as you go out the door. At this point, I would encourage everyone to please make sure your cell phone is turned off. <clears throat> The format of the program is that Tom Mercer will be giving an overview of the government. He is our moderator, and he will then introduce the speakers. Each speaker or a pair of speakers will have approximately 10 minutes to present his or her role in the government. Q&A will follow after the presentations. We will not be taking questions during the presentation. It slows everything down too much. We encourage questions that are relevant to the information that's been presented, and if you have additional questions, you can probably catch one of the speakers afterwards in the lobby. I'd like to turn the program over now to Tom Mercer. He's our moderator. Tom's been active member of the town government since the, since the late 1980s, variously serving on school committee, building committees for the Horace Mann, school renovation, the senior center, and the new high school. He's currently chair of the Franklin Town Council. Please welcome Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Sue, and please just raise your hand if you can't hear me, but uh, I think I'm loud enough so that uh, everybody shouldn't have a problem. Uh, thank you, Sue, and thank you for allowing me to moderate tonight's Civic Forum. Uh, our panel tonight uh, of speakers, Jamie Helen, our town administrator, Dr. Ann Bergen, chairman of, chairperson of the school committee, Sarah O'Hearn, Superintendent of Schools, Joe Halligan, Vice Chair of the Franklin Planning Board, Tony Padula, Chair of the Franklin Planning Board, and Melanie Hamblin, member of the Franklin Town Council. Our plan tonight is to kind of give you, a sh as quick as we can, uh, an overview of your local government here in Franklin. Basically, it's everything you ever wanted to know about local government and how it works, how it's supposed to work. <laughs> uh, so we'll hold questions, as uh, Sue said, till uh, the end of uh, the speaking portion, and then we'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Basically, we've put this into five or six questions. Uh, and we're going to address, each of us will address those uh, particular questions. For example, the first one is one that I have, which is what kind of government does Franklin have? Franklin has a town council, town administrator form of government. It's rather unique form of government. There are only 12 or a, roughly a dozen communities in the state of Massachusetts that have this form of government. Uh, I think uh, the most recent ones to come on board are North Attleboro and Amherst. Uh, Bridgewater uh, also has a similar form of government. They all have, we all have a little differences. Uh, 
in most cases it's the responsibilities whether they come under fall under the council whether they fall under the town administrator uh, those little differences are what separate all of these different communities uh, we did the home rule charter came into effect in 1978 and since then we've had a, uh, in 1995, we had a charter review. In 2010, we had an amendment. And uh, that's where we sit now. And as, as we go forward in time, uh, I can see uh, in the not too distant future that it might be time to look at it again and make some adjustments as we move forward in time. Uh, because things come become outdated or things that we should change. Uh, the next question that I had was, what is the structure of the government? And uh, I'll give Jamie a little shot here now because when we put up the website, I wanted to go to the charter on the website so that people could see how they could see where our charter is and where you could go to read it and see really how it functions. Jamie told me it was 18 pages, it's not 16. <laughs> uh, so it's very easy reading. Uh, and I'd ask each of you, take a few moments sometime and look at it. Uh, it really describes exactly how your local government works and who's responsible for what. The role of the town council, we're the chief legislative body. Uh, when the charter first came into effect, there were 15 councillors. Obviously, it required an amendment, not a not too distant future, to get it back to nine with, that was manageable. Uh, 15, they found, was very cumbersome. Uh, and the council sets the tone, the expectations and policy objectives. The council then also puts policies in place and the one of the biggest things we do is the town budget. We set the budget and we do public hearings on zoning. So zone, setting the zones in the town of Franklin come under the format or come under the town council. Uh, then the enforcement goes to the planning board. Most important job that the town council has is we have the authority to hire and fire him. Uh, <laughs> hence why you put my chair next to him. Uh, and basically, that's it. We set the policy, we set the budget, but it's his job to put in place how it's administered. Uh, we do have the council, for example, uh, we have the, we have veto power yep. on the fire chief, on the police chief, uh, library director, library director and director. DPW director. Those four people, we have veto power. What does that mean? It means if Jamie brings a particular, like we recently, he brought the new fire chief before the council, we ratified that appointment. Uh, we could say no, but we can't then tell him who to bring forward. That's not our job, that's his. So when that's why I like to use the word veto power because that's all we have is we can say no. We can't tell him who to bring forward. The other piece of local government is the school committee and the school department. And they operate independently from the municipals because we set by we the town council sets the budget 
that the school department, the school committee, and superintendent then have to manage to that number. But that number is set by us. But we have no control over their line items in their budget. Uh, that's totally under their jurisdiction. So, so that I'm not too long-winded, I'm just supposed to be the moderator. I just wanted to give a quick overview. Uh, and the questions that we'll be addressing, for example, which offices are elected, which are appointed, and by whom? Jamie will take care, uh, will go through that for you. How do officials and departments of the government interact with the public? Again, that comes, up, comes under Jamie. Then following Jamie's responses to those questions, then we'll go to Dr. Bergen and Dr. Hearn, who will uh, go through the school department and give you an overview as to how their, how, what, what their operation is like. And then we'll move to Mr. Halligan, who uh, will go through the uh, town, uh, the planning board issues. And then the uh, Melanie will bring us, bring us home, so to speak, uh, with how you can get involved in local government. And that's something that we really, really ask you to come, be a part of it. Come to a council meeting. Come to a planning board meeting. Well, they get a lot more people than we get. But, <laughs> uh, but come to a council meeting. I, I know they're on TV, but sometimes coming to a council meeting, you, you learn a little bit more about what's going on. And we'd love to hear you there, have you there. We'd love to have you come uh, call us, ask us questions. Uh, that's what we're there for. We're there for you. So please, if you have issues, don't hesitate. Our emails are online. Our phone numbers are online. Don't hesitate. Councilor DeLarco's in the audience. Councilor Jones is in the audience. Uh, please, don't hesitate to call any one of us at any point. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jamie uh, to walk us through the elected, which offices are elected and which are appointed. Go Great. for it. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Uh, welcome, every night, uh, everyone tonight. Um, as Tom said, my name is Jamie Helen. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be the town administrator here in Franklin. Um, I just want to thank everybody for uh, all their support. Um, quick shameless plug, I have to. Um, I just have to for both of our websites. Um, you know, the town and both the school district here, which I know they'll go into in a little bit, have put a lot of time over the years into trying to build a very customer-friendly website. Um, I point this out right now because we're going to go through a, a few of the different frames, but um, you know we have everything on here to job opportunities, how to volunteer, we have all the agendas and minutes. Um, most folks don't realize that there's email subscription lists to the town council agendas, and after every agenda, we ask the staff to put out an actions taken roll call document so you can see exactly how all the votes went. Um, you know, if you go to this email notification center here, you can sign up for legal notifications. We follow the letter of the law, and the planning board will get to this at some point, regarding the letter notifications and other things about when things are going on in town. Um, we go above and beyond what state law calls for, and we publish our legal notifications on the website right here for those, um, for those, uh, for those hearings, and you can actually get all that right to your inbox. Operates like every other email list. Most of them you probably won't care about, <laughs> uh, but at least every once in a while you can scan through the agendas and just check in for five minutes every couple weeks at what's going on at your chief legislative body. Um, and so those are really good resources right here. We have a comment box. People use it, so everybody here should use it too. We have a schedule and inspections online. We have a public works work order system right here online. Um, I always tell people, in order to be engaged, there's no um, education or degree you need on how to write something. Just tell us how you feel, as Tom mentioned ago. All of our email addresses are right out here online. The phone numbers are there. Uh, people talk to us all the time, ask us simple questions, stupid questions, good questions, intellectual questions. Um, that's what we're here for. So use these resources uh, to your advantage. 
um, to try to help everybody uh, inform themselves. We have a town budget archive, online payments, we have a town blog people can subscribe to. Um, you know, we don't put out, I mean, we put out a fair amount of information. Um, and so it really, I think, hopefully helps keep people engaged with uh, the data activity in the government. Up at the top here, you'll see uh, a boards and committees list that you hover over. To Tom's point, uh, the first question is, uh, which offices are elected and which are appointed? So there's five, really six, but five boards in town that are elected. It's the town council, the school committee, the planning board, the board of assessors, and if anybody has questions about what, who they are, you can ask us at the end, but the board of assessors, um, and they actually generally set your tax rate, and the board of health, which should need, um, you know, no. The board of health um, in, in Massachusetts, boards of health have a tremendous amount of power. Um, they have a lot of clout, they have a lot of regulatory clout um, over a whole series of issues that are very important to the public health. And the sixth office, not a board, that's elected uh, is the town clerk. <coughs> Um, the town clerk's staff is actually um, under, under, uh, under the pyramid structure of, of my office, um, but the town clerk herself um, is actually an elected official. So those are the only six bodies that are elected in town. As you can see here up on the screen, um, there's dozens of other committees. And the way that that process works, as I, I showed you a little bit a minute ago, there's a volunteer tab on the home page. All you have to do is fill out uh, that form, name, address, phone number, um, and check off some boxes for some committees you may be interested in. Um, but the rest of those committees are actually uh, appointed by uh, the town administrator myself, subject to ratification um, that uh, Councilor Mercer had mentioned a moment ago. Just like the police chief, the fire chief, the library director, the DPW director, all of those appointments are ratified by the town council at a public meeting um, uh, every two weeks. Um, there's one exception to that rule, um, which is the finance committee. Um, the finance committee in the town charter is unilaterally appointed by the town council. It does not need uh, my uh, appointment. Um, traditionally though, certainly since I've been here and I know while Mr. Nutting was here, um, Traditionally, the chairman of the finance committee and the chairman of the council have met with candidates for the finance committee and made that recommendation jointly um, to the town council for that ratification. There's nine seats on the finance committee, um, but that is the only one exception. All of the other boards and committees, those appointments come through the town administrator to nominate and go to the town council uh, for, uh, for ratification. So this is a fun one. Uh, the question that the organizers had, had posed to us, which is uh, how do officials and departments of government interact with the public? Um, that's a really big question. I'm gonna try to answer it to the best of my ability. But um, in short, we're a customer service um, delivery organization. If you think of the library, the senior center, even education, um, at some point what we're really delivering is a bunch of customer services to all of you. Every department interacts with the public in their own way. The DPW is going to interact with the public in their own way. Um, my office is going to interact with the public uh, in their own way. Um, in my impression, and since being in Franklin, um, our elected officials and our departments interact with the public um, you know, quite well. Um, that's our job, and that's why we're here, and that's what all of us love to do. Um, and so, um, as you can see from the website, and hopefully forums like this, um, and as Councilor Mercer pointed out a few minutes ago, we're here for you. No questions too hard. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. You just have to shoot an email. Um, I'm not going to go through the list of every single department in town and how they interact with the public. Most of them are fairly self-explanatory. Um, you don't want to call the police unless you need to. You don't want to call the fire department unless you need to. Um, but all of those organizations in and of themselves, they go out and do open houses during the Harvest Festival. They have Halloween parties. They go out and um, you know, police the neighborhoods. They interact at the schools pretty frequently. Every department goes above and beyond their general mission and try to do a lot more outreach. Um, one of the themes I've had since I've been town administrator that I've always spoken of is our departments need to do a better job telling our story and who we are, what we do, what we're there for, what we don't do. A great example last week before the town council was the DPW director, Bruce Canareggi, came and did an entire presentation on being the tree warden. 
Um, and if you've watched it, you would know how much the DBW director loves trees <laughs> um, and how, how much passion he has for it. Um, and there's a great example. He's got a, probably a 30 slide PowerPoint presentation on his website. You can go back and look at the, uh, the live stream last week and learn everything you could possibly ever want to know about trees in Franklin. And I think it shows a lot of the passion that he has um, seeing trees as assets. That's just one example um, of a few. <clears throat> Um, one of the things that the council uh, has certainly set out, um, I think it certainly stands for while Mr. Nutting was here as well, um, is they have a very high expectation of me in my office um, being very visible um, in the community. And so, um, you know, one of the things I'm proud of and I love doing, and I know that um, the council has certainly been very supportive of it, of me, um, is spending a lot of time going to a lot of events um, spending a lot of time going to the senior center, being at the recreational uh, department events, uh, being at the library for various things, and just having a very um, distinct presence in the community. And hopefully many of you have seen me at many things before. And if you haven't, invite me to, to whatever you got going on. But um, that's a standard and a goal that has been very clear in the expectations of me, as well as um, everybody in my office, um, is that um, we have a very, um, you know, we're very engaged in the community. Um, one thing I did want to point out to end my, uh, my segment um, about um, how we interact with the community. Um, if folks do go to the town charter, and I think Tom is correct, um, it's really 16 pages of your town constitution. It's all right there. I gotta say, I've read a lot of town charters in a lot of communities. Um, they can be books. They're very complicated. The checks and balances are very hard to understand. Um, this is a very, very well-written charter. And I can speak from the Mass Municipal Managers Association, which is the professional organization for uh, my job. Um, most communities are very, very envious of the town charter that the town of Franklin has. Um, they're very jealous um, that it's easy to understand. Um, it's very straightforward. It was very well-written. Um, and so I really encourage everybody to take a look at that. Um, one section in particular is section uh, 423. Um, and section four outlines the town administrator. Um, it's right there in two, two and a half pages. And um, I'm just gonna read this to you really fast because it's one paragraph. And it spells out my job right there, uh, right in plain print. Uh, the administrator shall attend all meetings of the council Keep the council fully informed regarding town and departmental operations, fiscal affairs, general problems. Keep the council fully informed as to the long range needs of the community, the practices and governmental trends of other communities and the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth. Prepare, assemble, and present to the town council the annual town operating capital budgets and cooperate with the finance committee in fall financial matters. And this is actually, the next one I'm about to say is a very, very important one here, and one that I can definitely assure you if Mr. Nutting is gonna watch this at home, he took a lot of pride in this one. <laughs> Serve as the general ombudsman to the community. <laughs> if everybody knew young Jeff, he certainly had a lot of opinions on various uh, operations in town. He did an excellent job at it. Maintain an inventory of all town real and personal property. Be responsible for all aspects of the personnel system. Serve as the chief procurement officer. Be responsible for the maintenance of all buildings and property, and perform su other such duties as may be required by uh, this charter, bylaw, or order of the town council. Um, it's right there in one paragraph what my job is. Um, it is widespread, it is, it is a big job. Um, one other thing in here I would point out is, um, that's very unique among uh, Franklin and a lot of other communities is, um, outside of the town clerk, every employee within the community reports to me. And I can tell you from uh, a lot of communities, that's something that a lot of employees um, like because they know where their bosses are, they know what the structure of the government is, and they know what's expected out of them. Um, to contrast that, in many communities, the Board of Health, for example, hires and fires all the Board and Health staff. The town manager may have no say in that decision at all. Many communities, the Recreation Board is elected and hires and fires all the summer staff, um, and the town manager has no um, power in it. Um, the town of Wellesley, um, the town manager there isn't even called the town manager, she's called an uh, executive secretary, I believe, and she has no authority over the DPW as the, as the de facto town manager. They have a separate um, legal uh, elected board that oversees their entire DPW operations. 
Um, and for a community like this, I know from the employee standpoint, um, at least they know where they stand and they know who they report to, um, which is very distinctive and very different than a lot of other communities. So, um, so there's some other pieces of um, this section in the town administrator and the town charter. Um, the one department I do not have any oversight over are the folks sitting to the left of me. Um, as Tom mentioned earlier, the school committee um, is its own independent uh, authority. Um, and I will uh, now pass the, uh, the baton over to uh, Chair Ann Bergen. Well, thank you. Very well done. Good. Thank you. Um, I also um, want to thank our hosts for uh, sponsoring this event this evening. Involvement in our local government is so important. It is where democracy shines at its brightest in its purest form. I'm representing the Franklin School Committee, having served at its chair for the last two years. The school committee is a seven-person committee elected all at the same time every two years, which isn't always a good thing, but uh, considering yeah, we turn over sometimes. So uh, We are primarily ambassadors for public schools in general, for the Franklin Public Schools specifically. All citizens in a community where they have children in school or not benefit when our public schools are remain strong. We need all the time, as people on the school committee, to demonstrate to the public that we are worth investing in. Our most important obligation and responsibility is the hiring and evaluation of this extraordinary superintendent sitting next to me. She runs the day-to-day -day operations of the schools. We don't do that. Um, and we went through quite a process to get the superintendent. I think maybe people remember we had one, one iteration and we had um, a, a surveys and we had focus groups and we had community events and we invited evaluation and we got the feedback from the community and it wasn't good enough for us. We said we need a stronger person. We started the process all over again and we got Sarah. The evaluation is another important part of, our, um, of the superintendent and it truly is a comprehensive process. Um, it's really a year-long process and we've held a number of workshops for ourselves as a committee so we can really get better at it because the first time around you know we weren't very good but we got better right Sarah we did, we did a better job the second time. You did both but, first. Okay. <laughs> so um, our second key responsibility is working with the superintendent and other stakeholders. We create the strategic plan, the vision for the schools. There are really now four key district goals that we have in place which we vote on as a school committee to approve. In addition, the school committee is responsible for approving the individual school improvement plans. Every school has its own school improvement plan, very much in line with the district goals. We keep it very, very tight. The school committee votes. There are presentations made, and we vote on those as well. But more importantly, or importantly, one of the big areas of responsibility our responsibility is to make sure that we monitor and, and, and hold people accountable. There's that accountability process. It doesn't matter what initiatives are put into place. You can say we're doing all these things. Well, we have to ask as school committee members, what's the evidence? Is it working? Is it doing what you say it's doing? And that's an important piece of what the school committee does. We also create policy that's um, for example, homework policy and the dress code policy. These are ones that recently came into being. And then constantly review and update a rather huge policy manual. That's another important part. And as Jamie mentioned, and Tom, the budget is, is an important, huge part of what we do as a school committee, working with the superintendent clearly and the business manager and all of the stakeholders um, to develop the budget again in support of those goals in, our, in support of our strategic plan. We also work with the joint subcommittees of the Finance Committee and the Town Council um, together because we are one Franklin. And it's really a cooperative partnership. Um, we're not pitting the schools against the town. I think in the old days sometimes that used to happen. But we work beautifully together in a cooperative way, again, with the, the best interests of the community in mind. And while we meet publicly every other week, um, that's actually the easy part of our work. Um, the real work of the committee is behind the scenes. Um, all of, certainly all of our full committee meetings are um, held in public session when we're all together. That's per open meeting law. We never go off and have private school committee meetings. All of our discussions as a committee are held in public. But we do break up into a number of subcommittees, um, which are also subject to open meeting law, including budget subcommittee, policy subcommittee, community 
community relations subcommittee, public schools advocacy. We have an ad hoc superintendent's evaluation subcommittee. We will be adding on a, um, another ad hoc committee focusing on the retirement of um, facilities. We have representatives who serve um, every month on um, a meeting of the parent, uh, heads of all of the parent councils in town. We have representatives on the School Wellness Advisory Committee. We have representatives on the Franklin Public School Substance Abuse Task Force. Um, all of the school committee members um, participate um, in, as part of all of the contract negotiations. Uh, involving the contracts for teachers, for ESPs, for van drivers, cafeteria workers, secretaries. Um, it's a lot of work. So, um, but the last part of what I wanted to say is just, there are so many ways for people to be involved, um, to be part of the process. Um, and the first we say is to be informed um, so that there are no surprises and so that when decisions have to be made, people are aware of all of the facts, all of the information behind a decision. We ask you to consult our website, to read our newsletter that we put out regularly. Please come to our meetings. Um, we have monthly coffee hours out in the community. Um, and we, we don't get a large crowd there, but every single issue that's been brought to the coffee hours, or those have been brought back to the superintendent and action taken. She's very responsive to that. Um, we make sure we are out at the Franklin um, Farmer's Market in the summer. We are at the Strawberry Soul, Stroll, the Harvest Festival. We also encourage you to participate and support the parent communication councils in your schools. They are desperate for help. They really, and they do such incredible work. And the amount of enrichment activities those parents provide, and they're always seeking help. You can help in so many ways. And the other is, is to serve on your, um, the site-based school councils. That's where so many decisions are made about individual schools. Um, so your, your support is really needed there. Um, and lastly, I would say um, we always encourage a, a healthy exchange of ideas. And, and sometimes we do. All of us serving in, for the community have to make tough decisions. So we're entrusted to make decisions in the best interest of our students. And not everyone always agrees. Debate is an integral part of our democracy, especially when the debate is focused on thoughtful, wise, fact-based information. We encourage respectful, thoughtful feedback always, and we encourage you to, we have our emails are out there. If you have questions, concerns, anything, we always make sure we respond, but in particular, because it's really, we don't get into the weeds of the schools, we make sure that Sarah, um, you know, we give that information to Sarah, and I can tell you she is extraordinarily responsive to everyone. And I'm going to turn it over to her now, with, but I just want to say, because she's modest about that, about the work that she does, and I've worked with maybe nine or ten superintendents in my, um, and I'm not old, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and she is quite extraordinary. She's just yeah. created this, this culture of trust, and she's visible every place. And every one of those subcommittees that I mentioned that, She's there all the time. She's out at the farmer's market. She's out at that. She comes every place. So I, I, don't, I know she won't say any of that, but I just felt I should say that because, and I'll turn it over to Sarah. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. I'm really happy to be here tonight. And uh, every chance I get, I want to be sure to share how happy I am to be in Franklin. I really love this community. Um, through the search process a few years back, felt like this was uh, an incredible fit and still feel that way. I'm headed into my, I'm in my third year, not headed anymore, it's almost October, in my third year and uh, I'm so happy to be here in Franklin as your superintendent of schools. Um, the school department website is um, on display and I'll walk through um, some of the pages with you that I think might be uh, most relevant, but I want to give you maybe a little bit more background in terms of the types of things um, that I do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, most of the time when I describe my job, it's to seven-year-olds or nine-year-olds in the classroom setting and their eyes light up when I tell them that I'm the principal of all the buildings. And uh, then they come to find out that that's, they think it's mostly related to calling school off uh, due to snow <laughs> in the winter. Um, I assure you there's a lot more that goes into the, into the position. Um, I work very closely with the school committee. The school committee are the liaisons with the community and I am the network uh, between the school committee and what's happening in the schools. Um, one of the most important things that the school committee does is set policy and all of the school committee policies are on their um, website in the policy manual and that, um, can I have your mouse maybe and I can? Yeah, sure. 
run through some of this. The school committee policy manual uh, is located on the school committee's website. And um, these policies are set by the school committee. They are really our governing practices. They ask me to implement the policies and at times develop procedures and guidelines uh, around which different policies uh, take place. Um, I participate with the school committee subcommittees that Dr. Bergen talked about. And the website also lists the subcommittees and their charges for uh, their work throughout the year. I um, certainly work with the school committee around the development of the budget and the budget implementation uh, throughout the school year. And we have uh, budget information also listed on our webpage and would invite you to take a look. It's regularly updated through the iterative budget development process that occurs um, mostly in this winter and the spring time. I think one of my most important roles is the hiring and supervision of our building principals. Um, Tom talked a little bit about the veto power uh, that the town council has. School committee has a similar type of engagement around a couple positions in central office, the assistant superintendent, the school business administrator, and the director of student services. Otherwise, um, the staff members and the personnel in the district um, are offered contracts by me. Um, but I think the most critical people that I'm offering contracts to and something I take very, very seriously is the search process and the hiring of our building principals. Massachusetts um, ed reform came into place in 1993, and that really set up the governance model of schools that we have today. It took um, a lot of decision-making power from the school committee level and put it into schools at um, site for site-based management and that is the structure that we operate uh, under uh, under today um, and I'm working with the principals as uh, Dr. Bergen had said on their school improvement goals and making sure that we're kind of all working towards that same vision of, um, of education uh, and what children need when they graduate from from Franklin High School um, it's important, I think, for the superintendent to be visible and to be an engaged member of the town. And one of the um, areas that you don't necessarily see in terms of that engagement is the collaboration between my office and the town administrator's office. I think we're really fortunate to be physically located um, in the municipal building and have a common set of offices so that our offices um, can communicate regularly up on the third floor. And then on the second floor, the finance department and our human resources department uh, can communicate uh, across personnel to create um, some coherence between the town department operations as well as the school department operations. We do share a facilities department and we share a technology department and we have uh, memorandums of understanding that govern that relationship, but there's a lot of collaboration and communication um, between our offices in order to make that run smoothly. Uh, Jamie and I also uh, come together and um, have relationships with our elected officials that represent Franklin and you may see some joint letters that we put out about ways in which um, the state can support the town on matters um, for both the municipal and uh, the school department. Um, the schools are really proud of community partnerships that we've built and we're continuing and looking to cultivate more, uh, but we are engaged, um, and I just jotted a few of these down, this is not a, um, a limited list, but we're engaged with the YMCA, the Franklin Food Pantry, the Safe Coalition, the Garden Club, and we're a proud member of the Franklin Cultural District as well. And we really um, enjoy those relationships and see that as being part of the community, we're fostering the growth and development of children um, in that way. Um, I'm regularly out um, 
giving appearances and talking about the school. So if there is something that um, might be of interest to you, ha always happy to share our story and tell about the wonderful things that are happening. Um, for example, uh, at least once a year, I'm out and at the senior center uh, sharing some of the developments within the school department. And coming up, uh, Jamie and I are both speaking with the newcomers um, to uh, let people know what's happening uh, in the schools and in the town. Um, on our school department webpage, we have um, some of these quick links, um, which um, I think you know for people in the schools might be things that are of interest in areas that they want to explore. But for tonight, the area that I'd like to encourage you to check out in the future is the Connect With Us page, which talks about our communication strategy and the ways in which you can remain informed related to things that are going on in the schools. Um, particularly if you don't have children in the schools and would like information pushed to you about what's happening, um, there is uh, something called District News that you can subscribe to and sign up for. And if you click on district news or on school committee news, you can sign up for some of the things that we'll be pushing out. Uh, for example, the superintendent's report from the school committee meetings um, gets pushed out to email addresses on district news. And school committee news, you can sign up, for example, to get agendas. And we're working on actions taken. That's the next, <laughs> that's the next thing that's coming. Um, so we encourage you to connect with us in that way. Yeah. Uh, there are volunteer opportunities that building principals and the human resources office manage um, where we might be able to make a good fit. Um, we enjoy business partnerships with businesses in the community. We, we like to partner up for the purposes of our senior internship program where seniors in their fourth quarter are doing internships with businesses um, as well as other um, areas of employment. We have um, students with us who might be with us 18 to 22 looking for vocational training. We have business courses where we're always inviting people in to engage students in authentic interviews. So if those are areas of interest, those might be a good fit if you'd like to be more involved. And then um, although the school year has started, um, we're a pretty dynamic place and we are um, well staffed. But there are always positions that we're looking for. And so um, we have a, a job site as well. And that might be a good fit for you or somebody that you know. It's not just teaching positions, but we have drivers and after school care um, and others. So those are some of the ways in which um, we'd love to see people get involved. And thank you for having me. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, next, we'll move to the planning board and uh, Mr. Halligan. Okay, uh, my name is Joe Halligan. I've been serving on the planning board now for close to 12 years. I appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. I'm also lucky enough to have the chairman here, Mr. Padula, who has twice the experience I have. And I believe at this point he has earned the role and the right to explain the process of the planning board. <laughs> Thank you. Passing the buck. Passing the buck. That's <laughs> called passing it off. <laughs> but I certainly would be open to questions through Mr. Mercer after the introduction. Okay. All right, just a quick introduction as to what the planning board does. The planning board has many roles in the land use process. Generally stated, the planning board. Can you speak up? You can't speak up. No, nope. then the mic's so on. You have to talk. All right, I have to talk. You know, I'm used to yelling, but. You can yell. Generally stated, the planning board is responsible for planning, reviewing, deciding on certain types of permits, approvals, and for administrating the subdivision of land within a municipality or the town. The planning board plays a vital role in the land use process by implementing the various land use regulations in, in accordance with the local zoning bylaws, Chapter 185. Planning boards are responsible for reviewing and acting upon applications for site plan approval as of right and special permits. In addition, the planning boards are responsible for reviewing and taking action on applications for definitive subdivisions, approval, and approval on ANR, which is approval not required. <clears throat> and you probably ask me what that is later on. <laughs> <laughs> and the planning board also plays several or lesser roles in the implementation of land use regulations of a municipality. The planning board must ensure that all procedural requirements are strictly followed to provide each person 
with the due process afforded to them by the laws and the Constitution. Furthermore, the planning board permitting actions must be reasonable and supported by the information provided by the board, by the applicant and other interested parties. The planning board serves as a special permit granting authority. In this role, the planning board reviews and takes action upon applications for special permits. A special permit is a discretionary land use approval that a property owner is required to obtain prior to undertaking certain activities on his or her property. The table of use regulations or list of permitted use loca is located in the local zoning bylaw. That's a book that you can, you can purchase right there at the town hall. Attachment use regulation schedule indicate what activities are required at a special permit. As a discretionary land use approval, the request for a special permit may be denied by the special permit granting authority for projects that the special permit granting authority anticipates will adversely impact the community. Alternately, the special permit granting authority, which is the planning board, may approve a request for a special permit subjected to conditions and limitations to prevent or mitigate potential adverse impacts on the proposed project. The local, local zoning bylaws include special permit evalu evaluation criteria used by the special permit granting authority to objecti objectively evaluate whether or not the proposed activity required requiring a special permit will have adverse effects or not. The content and form of the application for the special permit are dictated by the local zoning bylaws, the special permit granting authority rules and regulations. Special permit rules and regulations are adopted or amended by a majority vote of the planning board after notice and the public hearing. Special permit rules and regulations may include application requirements, a fee schedule, and procedures for review, site plan review, and requirements incorporated. Well, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Just a, <laughs> just, a, just a quick overview. We are subdivisions came from, or subdivision control law 185, which is Mass, Mass, Mass General Law 41. It was actually started in Boston for the control of streets and, and ways in 1891. It was later... Um, ratified in 1936 and in 1953 we, we had a pretty good uh, subdivision control law that all towns could adopt. This town, uh, Franklin, has adopted it in 1986. We finally adopted the subdivision control law. And that's that's where we started. And primarily as far for um, if somebody comes in with of course, an a and R is, is an approval not required. That means that a lot has frontage on the street. It doesn't have to come before subdivision. It has, doesn't have to come before planning board. All they need is a building permit. But for one or two lots, then it has to come before the planning board because that's considered a subdivision, something that doesn't have streets. Zoning is, is another thing that the town adopted. Uh, the planning board has adopted that. The planning board adopted that in 1930, which was zoning. And um, that's for a use re uh, regulation. That's just basically set the geography of the town as to what zones would be in the town and the uses on those pieces of property and where they are. And of course, they change. The council changes them. Um, as, as the population grows, they're changed all over town. Um, so, with that said, we will. I will take questions when time comes. Okay. Off, on to you, Melanie. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pedula. We'll move on. Uh, uh, Melanie Hamblin, who will uh, talk a little bit about how citizens be can, can become more involved in town government, and she has great stories to tell us. <laughs> well, so I won't tell them all tonight okay. because it will, we don't. We're limited in time. There you go. Right. Um, hi, everybody. As Tom said, I am Melanie Hamblin. I am on the town council, and I'd like to thank the host for inviting, inviting me. Um, 
I hope I can add a little bit to the commute to the conversation because I haven't even finished my first term yet, so I'm still learning. I'm one of the fre uh, freshmen. Um, it takes a lot to figure out how things work. So I know we we're here with this this panel tonight. Don't be worried if you're confused because it takes a long time to figure everything out. And or if you have figured it out already, you're way better than I am. Okay. Oh. So I'm actually going to ask Jamie to go back to the, oh, he's on the town council page. But I was going to go to the home page first. Sure. But. So there's a bunch of ways that you can get okay. involved, right? And it's really important for everyone to participate in the government, and we want to hear what is important to you. Uh, we, so if you go to the, um, the home page the, on the website, you will see down in the connect, there's the email notification. So I'm going to ask Jamie, since um, he knows that I can fire him, and he's going to follow my directions, right? With five, other, with five other votes. <laughs> oh, I only need five other people. Um, <laughs> I want to show you, um, these are all the things that you can get email notifications about, all the things that happen in town. So if you want to say you wanted to go to a planning board meeting, <laughs> Thank you. <Don't> go. <laughs> or a town council meeting, you can click the very bottom there is meeting agendas. And and those to me are really the most important things. The agendas and also the um, yeah, you, what do you jobs. Jobs. You can sign up for um, but the agendas and the legal the legal notices. I feel like the things that people want to know what's happening. And if you want to know what's happening, sign up, click that link, and then you can get notifications, e email notifications, when the agendas come out, when the legal notices go out. So you, then you'll know, like, oh, I want to go to this meeting, right? And then, so that's, that's the best way to, to know what's happening. If you go back, I'm going to have Jamie go back to the home page. <laughs> And then you look underneath the email notifications, it's the social media section center there. Right? So you can find all everybody's websites, everybody's Facebook pages, everything is there, all in one place, which it makes it really easy to stay connected, to find out what's going on. All the schools are there. And we even are gonna update our, our town town Facebook page, I think, pretty Correct. soon, right, Jamie? Yep. Yeah. Um, you can also live if you don't have cable TV, but if you have cable TV, you can actually watch all the meetings on Franklin TV. Right, there's uh, Verizon 26 and Comcast 8, I think. 29. 29? 29. 29. 29. Um, <laughs> right, but if you don't She's have, still learning. Yeah, still learning. <laughs> I even wrote it down wrong. No. Um, so if you, if you don't have cable, which a lot of people have cut their cord, but you have internet, you can live stream the meetings. You can even go down, if um, Jamie rolls down, you can see the archive, so you can actually watch the meeting, right? Which is pretty cool. It takes about a week or two to, for the, that meeting to get up on, on the website, but you can see it. There's no, you know, sometimes reading the minutes aren't, aren't quite as much fun as, as what really happens, right, right guys? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so, um, now Jamie's going to go to the town council page and oh the local phone directory. There's a local phone directory there too. You can you can find out anybody's phone number, all the departments, wherever you want, whoever you want to talk to, all in one place. All right. So we'll go to the town council page, and if you if you look over on the left side, there is a send a message to the entire council at once. One tap. Right. You're going to tap it. No. I well, I was hoping I didn't send you a <laughs> you message. Won't send oh, there we go. Right, okay. so there. So it, you, just, you can just write down whatever you want. Like Jamie and Tom have already said, don't overthink it. Just tell us what your what the issue is, because we want to know. Like we represent you, so we can bug him. Right. That's really what I feel my role is. Yeah. Right, you guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do that, or if you want to contact a single town councilor, you can go to the, this, this part of the page, 
you can scroll down, you can, you can see our, our email addresses, our phone numbers are there. We want you to call us and reach out to us. Um, you can click on names and, and email addresses and you'll get that same form, but it will go to one person instead of everybody. So don't um, be afraid or don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we also have, thank you, Jamie. Anything else? Um, I don't know. Is there, do you think there's anything else? No? I think you've hit The calendar is there. The, cal the town calendar is really good. That's right, Glenn. Thank you. Um, it has all the meetings, everything that's going on in town. And you can actually sort through uh, departments. You can make it, you know, like you can, you can simplify it if you want. But it, that tells you what's going on all the time around town. Right? Right? Yep. It's got all the, you know, the, yeah. it's got all the board don't bring up. meetings. Don't bring, don't bring up the planning board. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everybody knows how to get you guys. Um, and then there's also, um, this year we've been started a town, an administrative office hours at the Senior Center. Every third Thursday yep. from 8.30 to 9.30, Jamie or Chrissy are there. Um, I was there last week, Tom's been there. We, we want you to come up and talk to us and tell us what, what you're thinking about. So we're trying to be available. Uh, at the same time, our state rep, Jeff Roy, is there too, so you can do state stuff and local stuff. You know, you can get two, two things done for one visit. I think it's so, we're just trying to be available to everybody. So, but you can watch the, you can watch the meetings and you can, um, read the agendas and read the action items, but really the best thing is to come into the meeting. Right, so you come into the meeting, all citizens have five minutes to talk about any issue that they want to talk about that's not on the agenda. So we want you to come in because sometimes then we have to listen to Tom read. <laughs> Tom test What you're talk. allowed to do. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, and so that's your chance to tell us what's, what's happening, what you're worried about in your neighborhood, what you want us to think about. Uh, we cannot, at that time, interact with you, but the town administrator is taking notes, and then we get to bug him about it. Remember that person that came in, you know, that was really important. What are we gonna do about it? Let's figure something out. So that's how you can really make a difference in, in everyone else's day-to-day -day life. So um, those of you might know, or you might not know, that I spent about eight months going to every town council meeting before I ran for town council. And I did that because I wanted to actually add something to the town charter. I wanted to create an agricultural commission in town. And so you can't just go and do something. In my mind, I have to figure out how things get done and then go do it, right? So I spent, um, I, don't, I don't remember how many. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> and I'm still going to them, of course, right? Uh, <laughs> but, so we, I spent a lot of time at the town council meetings with Jamie and uh, Jeff Nutting at the time, the town administrator, as a normal everyday citizen yep. to create a commission. And I believe, like, Jamie and Jeff t t treated me the same way after I was a town councilor, when I, the same way as I was a citizen. So they're always open. They're always listening to everything you have to say. You just got to go up there and bug them once in a while. <laughs> right? We spent a lot of time. We worked with an with a, um, agricultural committee, who wanted, the people that wanted to start the committee. We worked with uh, the town administrators. And then we came up with a compromise on what would fit into the town charter and fit for the, our town. And so we actually did that pretty, pretty fast. Right, you guys? I mean, you guys voted on it. I was in the audience at the time. But it was amazing how when you figure out how things work, then you can get stuff done. Right. So um, I have another example of people reaching out to the town council that actually Made, it had a positive result. So there are a lot of people, I think my fellow town councilors that are here, 
have heard from people that they wanted to change the poultry bylaw. Right? People wanted to have the right, right? They wanted to have chickens. They wanted to grow their own food. We live in a right to farm state, so people should be able to do that. But the way the bylaw was set up is that it was impossible for people, most people, to have chickens in their yard because it was you needed too, much, too many feet, right? 100 feet on every side. So what happened was we brought it up, so they, we brought it up at the, at the um, Economic Development Committee meeting twice. There had to be like 20, 30 people there that came to support it. So that's huge, right? If people came in to the meeting in their busy schedules and said, we want to have chickens in our backyard, we're like, wow, okay, so let's, let's develop a way to do that and let's make it 25 feet and we sent it off to the planning board. And then people who supported it went to the planning board meeting. And then it came back to the town council meeting to get changed, the, the, to the zoning to get changed. And people came to that too. And that's when we said, okay, let's do, let's do it. Let's, let's vote this in. And we actually changed the bylaw, the usage, you know what it is, right? The zoning, the zoning news table, right? So that people, if they have 25, they can have chickens 25 feet off of their property line. But, so we listen to people, right? Um, and then there's, a, there's an example of someone who came to a town council meeting who really wanted to have food trucks in town, right? And so since somebody came in, we could just start bugging Jamie about, hey, let's, let's do food trucks, let's do, do food trucks. And, uh, and so because this person actually came in and actually spoke on the citizens, on the citizens comment time, we now have a, a food truck area. It's away from all the brick and mortars. It's up on the town common. And you can have, if you have a charity event, you can have a food truck there. Uh, for the food, right? Yep, right? that's correct. So thank Absolutely. you, thank you very much, Jamie, for that. Um, so those are, those are three examples of what can happen when you participate. Right? And it, it really, it's really kind of fun. Right, Tony? Oh, it's a blast. <laughs> Take my word for it. Got about it. That's why way, I put those two beside each other. Right. Um, so really, seriously though, I like to I like to joke around a lot, but um, because it can get kind of dry and boring. But really, email us anytime. Call Jamie. Okay. <laughs> um, being involved is it takes a lot of time. Right? It takes a lot of time to figure out where you fit in, what you can do, how, how things work. But it's worth it, because you live here, right? Okay? All right, so I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. Okay. Uh, before I open it up to questions, is, I, I just want to close with a, with a couple of thoughts. And one of the things that uh, uh, Dr. Bergen touched on and uh, Superintendent Ahern touched on, which I think uh, in the 30 years that I've been in the municipal government, uh, I've never seen a community do it other than us. And that is when we, when we built the new municipal building, we put the school administration and the town administration in the same building. And we took the town administrator and the superintendent of schools and their offices are actually back to back. And just one door open and they can talk to each other. I defy you to find a community in the state of Massachusetts that has that type of uh, closeness with their government. And I, we need you to understand that many times people look at uh, town government and schools and town. I'm sorry. We are one. We are one. School department runs, takes care of their budget. The town takes care of our, our budget, or Jamie and Sarah. But we work together as one. And if there's one thought that I could get you to leave with tonight, it would be we are one Franklin. 
and that's who we should be. That's how we should think of th think about our government and how our government works. Now, with that, uh, oh, one more. Sorry. <laughs> everybody you see here tonight, and everybody that you've heard talked about tonight, that serves you, the taxpayers of Franklin, you know, on these local, uh, the council, planning board, school committee, all of these, nobody's getting paid. Nobody is getting paid. We do this because we love our community. And we've, in a lot of cases, and mine in particular, I've been here, I was born here, uh, I do because I love my town and I want to give back to my town. And that's what everybody here is trying to do. We may not always agree, but we can agree to disagree. But we are all here for one thing, and that's to make our town a better town. So with that, I will open it up to questions. That's it. Please. The charter schools um, are independent. They are public schools in Massachusetts, but charter schools are independent from the local school department. We do have um, some operations. Um, for example, transportation is something that we're responsible for, so we do um, respond to transportation for the charter school. And we have communication back and forth on things that would support children. Um, but from a governance standpoint, they are um, their own entity. Another question, yes, in the back. And I'm gonna repeat the question only so that the people at home uh, can hear it through the microphone. Has there been any discussion about hiring a sustainability manager? Okay, the question is, has there been any consideration given to hire a sustainability? Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, right, just keep dishing them over right now. Um, we have not. Um, and the main reason why we have not um, is just budgetary constraints. We have a uh, full uh, facilities department that traditionally handles most of these uh, requests. Um, a couple of fun facts um, that uh, many people don't know. <clears throat> um, over 90%, 90 to 95% of all electricity in the town and school buildings is actually generated from um, the solar field on Union Street on the Nuns' property. Um, we're a green community. We're very proud of that. Um, we've been certified a couple years ago in that. Um, all of the buildings in town have LED uh, converted lights to them. Um, the uh, street lights, uh, many of you may be aware, we just converted from the old high sodium um, lights and bulbs to all LED throughout the entire community, which will save us probably about 75% of our operational costs and maintenance costs um, on our street light account in the budget. Um, you know, fully matured, it'll probably save over a couple million dollars um, over about 20 years, which the bulbs, LED lights usually last for about 15 to 20 years. The old sodium bulbs were like three to five. Um, so just all of those things alone. Um, all of our facilities, um, Facilities Department and the DPW do a tremendous job um, keeping our facilities up to date. Um, they all have updated capital plans. Um, we have a very meticulous capital uh, program and policy in place um, to keep our school buildings and all of our facilities energy efficient. Um, we actually had an audit done um, from a third party that's required to become part of the green community certification process. Um, and um, you have to have in there um, a fine 20 percent um, of your electricity load. You have to find ways in a certain time frame to be able to to be able to, um, to reduce your um, energy consumption by 20 percent. Um, the third party um, consultant, as well as the state uh, Department of Energy uh, Resources. Um, couldn't get us to 20 percent. And the main reason why is all of our mechanicals and boilers um, and all the traditional things where you can kind of spend a couple hundred grand to get a lot of those energy savings. Um, they couldn't find us the 20 percent. So they essentially gave us a waiver to go underneath uh, so that we could still be certified. Which really speaks to, I think, a lot of the leadership that the town has had for many years. So, you know, all of that work has been done through my office. Um, a lot of it was done by me. Some of it was done by Mr. Nutting. A lot of it was done by the facilities director, Mr. D'Angelo, as well as the DPW. 
Um, and so we've been able to spread out a lot of those tasks that a sustainability coordinator would normally have in maybe another community. Um, we've been able to spread out a lot of those um, tasks throughout the um, current operating staff. Um, and so we don't feel like we had to go out and spend another 60, 70 or thousand, you know, eighty thousand dollars in health insurance um, for a full-time person. Another part, another part of that is when we uh, built the new high school in Franklin. Yep. Uh, we were awarded uh, back from the state, from the Mass School Building Authority, two points for our green for getting green status at the high school. That two points was $2.2 .2 million. Yep. 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 Another question. Yes? Um, other than you, Jane and Sarah, how much time is involved and how much time do you give? That's a great question. Um, my wife is sitting over there. <laughs> She's called the divorce lawyer two or three times. <laughs> Uh, no, she just forgot what you yeah, looked yeah. like. <laughs> That's true. I, and I'll repeat the question uh, so the people at home can hear. How much time do we uh, put in as elected officials? And I, I guess I, I'll speak for myself and I'll let everybody else speak for themselves. It's as much as you want to put in. Uh, I can tell you I spent 10 years as chairman of the school committee in the 90s when we were the fastest growing community in the state of Massachusetts. That was a time consuming time, uh, for sure. Uh, in the last uh, 10 years, I've, I chaired the building committee for the new high school. That took a lot of time. That was a six year project from start to finish. Out many nights, uh, going to people's homes, talking to them about why we needed a new high school. And I can, uh, former uh, superintendent of schools and myself, we were out three nights a week uh, for maybe a year uh, just doing that. So it's what you can give uh, and it's as much as you want to give. Uh, I'm fortunate and lucky enough that I'm able to give a little more time than a lot, but uh, you know, town council, I can tell you, is probably not as time consuming as school committee. <laughs> I know you might find that odd, but I can tell you uh, from personal experience that uh, it was more time consuming as school committee. Of course, there are fifty percent of the people love you. Fifty percent don't. <laughs> uh, so, Ann, go ahead. Well, yeah, it, it just sort of as I was outlining the uh, various subcommittees, um, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of time. But as Tom was saying, it's sort of some people have more time to give than others. I'm I'm retired, not old, but um, <laughs> and so I you know I, I can be more on more of the committees just because I have the time and some people you know work full time or who are on the committees and, and don't have as much time to give but um, as Tom said it's 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 really an act of love and and, and um, the, the work is so intriguing and interesting you know but it is it's it can be as much as you know three meetings a week, you know. Um, like I was saying, that it, I think sometimes it's a little bit deceptive because people think maybe that the work of the school committee is the meetings every other week, and there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. But again, it, 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 we don't want to make it seem oppressive so that people won't come up. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to tell the truth. <laughs> that, yeah, but, but to say that, that as much as you want to give, you know, that, but yeah. It's, Oh yeah, I would say. Every, you know, it, it, yeah, oh, yeah. Easily. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. Tony, Joe? Yeah, I'm uh, we get our books on Thursday uh, late afternoons, uh, which is a pretty thick book for the meetings that are going on. Uh, everything's submitted to the planning department, uh, I believe a week ahead of time. So we've only got from Thursday night till Monday night to study our books and really get a grasp on what's coming in front of us. So that does absorb nights and weekends. I'm lucky enough that I have a place of business on 140, not trying to solicit my business, uh, but I'm very approachable. And over 12 years, people have learned, oh, I can stop in and see Joe. I, I, I live in town, I work in town. 
I'm lucky enough to have that opportunity. And several times a week, people will just walk in, do you have a minute? That minute turns into hours sometimes, <laughs> conversations. And a lot of it is a lot of people are trying to get educated on a project. They don't understand the process. I don't want to say I'm running a miniature schoolroom, but I try to groom the people on what to expect, what the bylaws are, the rules, the regulations. They get a little more understanding of what the meeting might be coming up. Nothing is discussed particularly about a particular meeting, but how it works and why is that going in and why does that person have the right to do it. So th th there is some, uh, an education process for the planning board that a lot of people, to pick up the book and learn a lot more about how the planning department works. Uh, it seems like, I was talking to Jamie earlier tonight, that if you've been watching the planning board meetings lately, uh, our, our planning board meetings have become more of a classroom <laughs> than actually spending time making decisions. We're getting large crowds, people don't understand the process of the board, and we're giving a lot of our time. Uh, that's, in the 12 years I've been there, it's starting to get up to 10 o'clock now, 10, 10.30, which never was like that at the beginning. Because people really do want to understand the process, but to come to the planning board to learn, and they're not picking up the books and learning prior. And sometimes being prepared is better than not being prepared. So uh, there is a lot of time put in, hours, nights, studying during the day. Uh, but I'm open for that. I, that's why I took the position. I enjoy it. I like it. And I will continue to do that. I think we could consider it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the, the que okay, the question was, could the lifelong learning uh, part of the school department, which is evening classes, is that, could they teach a class on this? And Sarah was about to answer that. Yeah. Oh, on anything. Yeah. Right. How right. government works. Basically what we're doing here. Yeah. Certainly something that could be looked at. And if you saw Sarah with her pen, as she, u she usually <laughs> is, she's right on top of it. Yes. Uh, yeah? Oh, Lord, how does the Disability Commission fit into town government, and how do they communicate? Very good question. That's, a, very, that's a really good question. <laughs> repeat the question. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll repeat. How did, sorry. How does the disabilities uh, Repeat it. Commission. I'm sorry. Uh, the Disabilities Commission interact with the town. How does it get into the town government? And Jamie's pulling it up on the website now. So, uh, in short, um, the, dis the, dis the Commission on Persons with Disabilities, it's its own um, legal okay. entity. Um, and traditionally, the most interactive way they work with us um, is on education and outreach. Um, but more importantly, they work with the building commissioner, Gus Brown, um, on making sure that, um, you know, the businesses, residents, you know, even the town government that we're adhering to basically state um, code relative to ADA access. And so that's really the big interaction. In fact, um, the building commissioner, um, most of the boards and committees in town, in fact, I think all of them, um, for example, the planning board has a whole staff that work with their department. Amy Love, our town planner, um, is phenomenal. She staffs all those meetings. Uh, the town engineer goes to all of those meetings. Just like myself and the assistant to the TA go to all the council meetings as well as the town attorney. Um, the superintendent and her staff go to the school committee. Um, the building commissioners, the, what we call the staff support um, for the disability commission. And really it's mainly about um, correcting problems within the community that many people see either before they actually enter a building and they have trouble or certainly after. Um, and the building commissioner is authorized under the state statutes to be able to execute that entire thing. So it's really a, it, you know, they could come through the council to me, to the building commissioner. It's very inefficient. Um, for those of you who know Gus Brown, our building commissioner, um, he's unbelievable at what he does. He is in, uh, an incredible advocate. Um, for um, ADA compliance. Um, um, ADA is a difficult um, federal statute to comply with um, all at once, but um, as, you, um, as you go through life and as projects turn over, residences and commercial buildings um, 
they'll get to refile, but you try to comply with those things um, on a case by case, uh, case by case basis. But for anybody watching at home who's here and they have something they want to ask relative to that committee, um, the best first stop uh, is to call the inspectional department and talk to Gus. Um, I think the committee meets maybe once a month, and I think they take the summers off, so they maybe meet, maybe meet about eight times a year. Um, and then every spring they also have um, an educational campaign um, where they have the state officials from the state building office um, come out and do a presentation for the community. Other questions? Yes, up in the back. Well, currently, Jamie's only been here for, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, Get ready. No, just. <laughs> uh, basically, the question, the, the question is, uh, with the uh, gridlock at the, at the national level, uh, with the legislative branches of our government, we're not seeing it here. Probably right now, because uh, we're, we're in a pretty good place right now. Uh, I believe that we have as good an administrative team as any town in this, any town in this state. Uh, we have a great group of people that do a great job for all of you uh, and us. Uh, sure, go ahead. Two quick points, I'd, I'd say. Um, the point that Councilor Mercer pointed out at the begin or a little while ago, I think, is actually one reason why you have that. Um, both the superintendent and I came from other communities. Uh, we worked in other places before we came here. Um, and I can only speak for myself. I know, you know she's also, we've talked about this before, and she said the same thing. But having our offices and having the administrative suite in the same building having our human resources departments in the same suite in town hall. Our finance offices are in the same suite in town hall. We have one facilities department. We have one technology department, one director that oversees all school and town uh, technology needs. I mean, I think the culture is, is just that the collaboration is just part of everyday business. Um, when they moved to the building 15 years ago, Sure, there was probably some some folks who were a little, you know, had you know weren't sure how this was all going to work, and now what we find, or at least what I find every day, is is our school and town finance teams work together. Um, the town does the payroll for everybody, the warrants, um, and best practices are shared among our professional staffs, um, including us. Um, you know, and, and we talk very often, um, Sarah and I, about what legislative things can happen, what should we strategically do with our legislators. Um, and I just think that that culture is a big part of what, of what Tom had mentioned earlier. Um, I also think our staff is second to none. And um, in my experience here, um, I, I will say that I think Jeff, um, before me, and even myself, I, we've been able to um, attract and retain um, some really, really great staff members. And I think by the fact that um, when I go look into hire people, yeah, you need somebody with a technical background, right? I mean, you need somebody who's an engineer, who's a licensed engineer to be an engineer. Um, but I know that a lot of the factors we consider is also the intangibles, the emotional intelligence, the attitude. Um, does this person have to, you know, do they already know everything or do they have a career arc to them? And I think that um, you know, Jeff before me and certainly myself and a lot of the other staff, and I would say the same thing about the school department, I think we look for great character individuals and I think we look for people who have less ego, who are gonna look for the greater good in the community and I think we've um, you know, developed a, pr a pretty solid culture here with great employees who really work collaboratively together. The fire chief, she knows who, who the fire chief is. We know who Brutus, the DPW director is. Um, all of our staff work so collaboratively, collaboratively together. I've never in my four years heard, heard anybody say, that's not my job. You know, and, and I think from the bottom of the organization to the top and the top down, I think that's a really big reason why you don't see what you're seeing in DC see. here, um, is because our employees are, are a really, really big part of that. 
um, and everybody works collaboratively, works together, and works really hard um, to try to get the job done. Melanie, you want to add yeah. something? Um, thank you. I just wanted to add that for the town council, we are all councilors at large, right? So we don't we don't represent a district or a precinct. We we all represent everyone, right? It's a nonpartisan board, so. Um, we always have to think of what's best for everybody, you know, safety-wise, um, health-wise, everything that we do, we, we have to think about everybody at once. And I think that helps. And I, and I agree. Every, every vote that we take at the town council, I, I firmly believe that every councilor sitting there is voting in what their opinion of what their opinion is of 34,000 people, what is in the best interest of the majority of those people, and that's how we should vote. I know that's how I look to vote. And I'm sure every other one of my counselor, uh, fellow counselors vote the same way. Yes. Good, very good question. Jamie, uh, I'm sure Jamie will pull it up on the... i repeat this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can tell him <laughs> I can't. to do it. You yeah. should be telling me to yeah, do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at the volunteer uh, link. Yeah, watch yeah. it. Uh, the, qu the question is, uh, how, how do you sign up? Uh, how do you get more involved in local government? Where do you go to find out what the terms are? I do. Are you signing on for uh, a one-year term, a six-month term, whatever the case may be? I will tell you that occasionally, just from a personal experience, uh, when uh, I was on the building committee for the, uh, uh, or chaired the building committee for Horace Mann Middle School, that was an 18-month project. Mm -hmm. Five and a half years later, we finished it. <laughs> but that was because we had a contract to go belly up in the middle of the project. And uh, you, then you go to bonding companies and it becomes a big mess. So, uh, but those are the kinds of things. But in most cases, they're annual. Uh, yeah. so, so the generally speaking, the vast majority of volunteer positions that are not elected um, that's separate, um, are going to be for three-year terms, the vast majority of them. There's a couple exceptions, like the Cultural Council, which is really in state statute, and it's a two-year term. You can serve three consecutively. There's a couple of funky ones with a couple of various rules. But, you know, most of the bigger committees that most folks, um, you know, the fin FinCom, the Conservation Commission, you know, all those groups, the Disability Commission, those are all usually three-year terms. And my recommendation is twofold. One, um, there's a volunteer form right here on the, on the bottom of the website. Um, it goes to a form that um, comes into a queue in our database with all the information. Um, and you just simply check off the boxes up here that you'd, you'd be interested in. Um, what we also recommend is um, you know, go to the website, look at all the boards and committees. Each website has their own um, kind of, basically their committee charge, what they're responsible for, maybe some resources, some links. Um, to state laws or the Board of Health maybe has regulatory issues that they deal with frequently and you can find those links on those websites. And I think the most important thing I find is is that people should really do something that um, is fun and interests them. Um, you know, if you don't find what you're doing fun, um, a lot of this is going to be um, very difficult um, to take in. Um, as I think a lot of people that always come to me say after they volunteer for a year or two, they go, wow, this is like really sophisticated stuff. Like, you know, you, this is a lot more than I thought. Um, you've got Mass General Laws, Code of Massachusetts Regulations, local bylaws. As Melanie had pointed out a little earlier, it can be a lot to learn um, quickly. And so oftentimes I also suggest to folks to just go to a couple committee meetings. It's right on the, com the committee calendar. If you know you're like, for example, if you're inter interested in environmental related issues, maybe go to the Conservation Commission for a couple meetings and see what it's like. Um, call up the staff member. Um, our staff 
meet with um, prospective volunteers all the time for a half hour with the conservation agent. What is this? What is this like? You know, what is the? As Joe pointed out, what's the planning board book like? You know, before you go throw your hat in the ring, know what you're getting into on Thursday to Monday. Um, when you pull out these huge plans and you try to make sense out of a you know, stamped engineering plan and you go, what did I get myself into? This isn't fun. <laughs> um, and so I think some of those are usually the things that, um, you know, that I would recommend. Um, and I always tell folks, um, now that we've had an online form, um, most if not all of our volunteer positions right now um, are currently filled. But we still get volunteer applications from folks, and um, the staff keep um, you know a folder with all of those folks. And when somebody resigns, sometimes people resign in the middle of a term; um, they just aren't interested anymore. They have family commitments or something else, um, and then we contact the next person um, that that emailed us. So um, we encourage everybody, whether the seats are filled or not, um, to just hop online and, and fill out the volunteer position. As for elected positions, <laughs> you know. Um, it's a little bit more um, cumbersome, I think, from the um, perspective that you have to um, go in, get um, fill out papers, uh, nomination papers. There's a legal window at which you can fill those out as. Um, there are different requirements of how many signatures you need to get um, validated and certified by the town clerk. Um, my recommendation on the, on the elected offices is to um, certainly talk to any of these folks up here who have gone through that. Um, and if you don't find them tonight, definitely call the town clerk, um, both uh, um, the town clerk, Teresa Burr, as well as the assistant town clerk, Nancy Danello, um, can make sure that you have everything you need and you know what you're getting into, um, you know, before you go out and, and get all those signatures. And we, we've all just gone through that. Yep. Uh, Councilor Jones, Councilor DeLarco, Brian Chandler here, who's a, a, a new person running uh, for town council. Mm -hmm and everybody across this uh, <laughs> table tonight, so. Other questions? Yes, sir. Was the town alert system not used for the triple spraying because it was sort of pushed off? Well, that was, that's a state thing, but should the town tell us about something that affects every citizen? Can I summarize it? Go ahead. So the question was, um, the town um, notification system um, shouldn't it be used for the triple e updates um, yes and no um, it's a double-edged sword we use the town from now i want to also while we have the pulpit um, we do use one software system um, and the school department and the town um, use that notification system for different reasons um, obviously, the school community uses that for notifi notifications to parents for school closings or other events and the things that you all um, use it for. Um, the town does use the um, notification system. We try to use it judiciously, um, and the main reason why is it's almost guaranteed every time we use it, no matter how big the emergency is or how little the emergency is, we get inundated with dozens of phone calls and emails saying to take us off the list. Um, and so um, it's a fine line. Um, what we tried to do was um, use the website and social media to try to get out as much information about that as possible. Um, that was in the state's management plan. Um, and so it is a difficult call. I will not deny that that's you know, one part of my job that is tough in terms of when to decide to use that. I would say in the case of the Triple E, there was no emergency in Franklin. So we can't go declare legally through the Board of Health or the town, we can't just go say, oh, we're a critical state um, in the community. That is, that is the Department of Public Health's um, jurisdiction. And, um, and so they've never declared us as a critical or even a, um, um, a high risk in Franklin. I respect the fact that folks feel that fear. Um, many communities around here are in critical state. Um, I know Medfield because of the horse that, um, that died. Um, but um, we've had many conversations with this with the Board of Health. Um, I know we've had it at the council meetings. Um, and what we've tried to do is because we are at a moderate to low risk for the entire season, um, we've tried to do a lot of social media presence outreach and using the town blog, the town email subscription list, as well as um, having daily updates um, on the town website. 
Yes, ma'am. I just have a quick comment. I get an email every day. It's an overview of things that are happening in town. And it's frankly disturbing. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, 
And the first stop that most businesses make is to the planning office, which is also our Board of Health office, our Inspectional Services office, and mostly important in your, to your question is the Zoning Compliance Officer's office, which is the same as the Building Commissioner. That's the same thing as Gus Brown. Um, when a business comes to town, unless it's a new building, a change of use, deals with liquor, or other permits, um, like maybe a tobacco permit from the Board of Health or other things of that sort, um, it's fairly rare that there's really a public process behind that. Um, it's generally between the landowner um, and whoever the tenant is gonna be um, on a purchase and sale of the property or a lease um, of the property. Um, and so there really is not a lot of opportunity um, unless there's a public process um, required either via the planning board for a change of use, for example, or sometimes the zoning board of appeals um, is another public committee that hasn't come up tonight. Um, they may need a variance for some reason, or they may need some of these other words that a lot of people may not know, but um, they may need uh, an, uh, uh, a waiver. Um, and so those are public processes that do take place. They are posted 48 hours in advance, and they are on the town calendar um, on the website. Uh, there and so people can come and give comment um, on any of those public uh, procedures at the ZBA or the Planning Board or the Conservation Commission. Um, in terms of generally an established building where the use is not changing, um, you know, it's pretty hard if, if say, a Wendy's was going to be converted into a McDonald's or a Chick fil A or a Burger King or something like that. Um, you know, it's a very limited window, if any, that the public gets to kind of comment, you know, publicly on that to deny that um, transaction from happening. Um, I'll be completely honest, it's very, very difficult to have that occur. Um, usually, in my experience, uh, businesses that come into town that somebody doesn't want, um, you know, for maybe that kind of reason in terms of the Chick-fil-A, usually comes from maybe more of a citizen-based grassroots effort uh, for example, that business in terms of what you spoke of, um, you, you know, I know the city of Boston had a proposal at one point and basically there was enough people to rile up and get to the city council and the mayor and, and said, you know, we don't want you here. <laughs> um, those are fairly rare um, and they're difficult to do. They're certainly successful in some cases. Um, but just, just a general rule of thumb, if you're going from like a, a hair salon to a um, you know, a, a niche olive oil shop or something like that, or a restaurant, um, unless it's something new, it, it, it's a little bit more difficult to know when those things are coming. Hope that, hope that answers a little bit. I could probably talk for an hour, two hours, <laughs> about, to be honest with you. That's a complicated question. I just yeah. hope that people understand that the ladies next to you have a responsibility to the children of our community, right? And us as parents have a responsibility to our kids, too. And it's very difficult to have those conversations when there is perhaps a business coming to town that is so volatile and is so um, anti what many of us are about. Mm -hmm. So I just, hope that, I just hope that those considerations happen at every level and just understand that there are consequences um, because it's, it's impossible to have the can't be everything or everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Either the town stands for something or it doesn't. Yeah. It's, True. It's, 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 it, it, you, can't, you can't say, you know, Boston made the point that they made and it stuck, stood their ground. People might disagree, but everybody understood, okay, that that is too volatile of an issue to bring to Boston. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would just hope that if that moves forward in Franklin, that there is at least consideration that that is going to Absolutely. Understood. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, somebody somebody else had. No? Yeah. Um, I think you know, I think you know, no? Okay. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.